the phone call in um, number to call in and those of you guys that are using your phone follow those instructions and thank you for doing that uh, it was our plan to also send an email that was supposed to have gone out to all the juniors and sophomores with a link to just click on to get you online that way you can visualize everything that is um, that's going to be on PowerPoint and the website so anyway um, that email didn't end up being generated and I apologize for that. I sent it out this weekend and I didn't know anything until this morning that it didn't go out. So I apologize for that. So what we've done to remedy the problem is if you go to the Bloomfield High School website uh, under school news, it's supposed to be in the, I haven't checked it yet, but Mr. Linty, uh, the one that actually went in and put it in, emailed me and said that he got it taken care of. And it's supposed to be the first item under school news and you should be able to click on the web or the, the zoom meeting i said webinar and be able to follow the instructions okay so i also want to let you know this is being recorded so we will have a video posted at some point where you can re-access this and then also um anybody that wants to you know anybody that feels like they want to log in tomorrow can also we're doing the same meeting again tomorrow tomorrow was supposed to be the sophomores but if you have technology issues and you want to be able to uh, log in tomorrow you can do that as well the reason we separated the juniors and sophomores isn't because the information is different it's because we didn't want to crash the system this particular Zoom meeting uh, has the capability of allowing 300 people to be logged in at the same time so we wanted to avoid having 300 people logged in was the whole purpose behind separating it. So I'm gonna kind of give an overview of what we wanna to accomplish today. So um, as you know, we're dealing with the COVID-19 situation and life is very different. I'm sure we all look a little bit different. Even the barber shops are closed. So my hair's getting a little bit scraggly. If this goes on too much longer, I'm gonna be in a ponytail before we know it. But anyway, uh, just trying to be a little bit funny but yeah things have really changed so we're trying to step things up and try to navigate to those changes uh, such as trying this zoom stuff out and we are the only high school uh, in our area right now as of yesterday that is that is taking advantage of this opportunity to meet with Annie Wilman our dual credit coordinator and she's going to take over here in just a few minutes but the overall goal that we want to accomplish today is one is we want to make sure that you guys know how to register as dual credit students so before we can even, as a, you know, Mrs. Fowler is gonna be helping you guys get the class that you want. I'm gonna be doing that part as well. But before we can even get to that point, you guys have to be registered as dual credit students. Otherwise, if we send an email to the college, they're gonna go into the system and they're not gonna be able to find your name. So the first part of this is we wanna make sure that you guys know how to register for a dual credit class or register as a dual credit student. Then we're gonna actually show you guys how to, how to take a look at your classes and pick what classes that you wanna do. You need to be career-minded when you guys are thinking about the classes that you wanna do. Keep in mind, uh, the college wants you to have a 2.6 grade point average to be able to do most classes that are dual credit. So you wanna keep that uh, aspect in mind. You wanna be thinking about the type of career you wanna do because the reason this is even called dual credit is you get two credits, right? You get the high school credit that's gonna help you graduate, and then you also get a credit that goes on your college transcript. That's why it's called dual credit because you get two credits. So if you want these credits to work for you towards a degree, you wanna make sure that you're taking credits that are gonna benefit you in that regard. Also know that in order to graduate from Bloomfield High School, you have to do either a dual credit class, an AP class, an honors class, or there's a few uh, Edgenuity classes on our online Edgenuity platform that you could choose, but you have to do one of those in order to graduate from high school. So for some of you guys, you're already thinking about the degree that you wanna get and the career you wanna have. And some of you guys are thinking about just picking a class just so that way you can fulfill the graduation requirements. But anyway, we wanna show you how to pick the class because what you guys are gonna end up having to do is you're gonna have to email Mrs. Fowler and myself the class that you guys want to take okay after you pick that out keep in mind one of the things that you have to let us know whenever you choose the class that you want we have to know whether you want it to be an online class or whether you can actually go to the college and take it meaning that you have transportation next year so if for instance you choose a class that requires transportation and you don't have transportation for next year that's going to be an issue okay but you know, there's a lot of classes that you can go one way or the other, be online or actually go up to the college. But it's very important 
that we know because if we sign you up for uh, an online section or, or, or a section that requires transportation and you can't get up there, that's gonna be an issue. So we do need to know that those types of things, okay? So again, we wanna show you how to register as a dual credit student so that your part's taken care of and then you can kind of look at the classes that you want. Another thing that, um, that Annie's gonna also address, and, and this may be the first thing that she does, um, is if you guys are currently in a dual credit class right now, what you need to do in order to take care of that class. As you know, the end of this week on the 17th is the last day to drop a class without having an F on your college transcript, okay? Now, concerning the COVID-19 situation, the college has done a lot of really cool things to help you with that process. So you don't necessarily have to drop the class and I don't wanna to do too much of Annie's information, but there's a way where you can take uh, an incomplete and be able to work with your professor and finish that class up later into the summer if you work out a plan. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail in that. I'm gonna let her take over that, but I just, want you to know that there are other solutions other than dropping a class if you're struggling with it right now. And I'm gonna let her explain that. So uh, whatever order Annie wants to go in, I'm gonna let her take over and we'll all be here to answer questions uh, after she gets going. And thanks Annie for being here and be willing to do this for our students. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Mr. Dixon. Thank you so much for that introduction and um, welcome everyone. My name is Annie Willman. I'm the dual credit coordinator at San Juan College and I'm very excited that you've taken the initiative to join us today. So in order to make it meaningful for all of you, where I'm going to start our content is focusing on the registration for summer and fall classes. And then if you are a student that is currently taking a San Juan College class in the spring 2020 semester, so you're currently working on a class, whether it be an online class or even a class that was taking place at Bloomfield High School, um, you can stay on at the end of the call. And I do have a lot of uh, PowerPoint slides, not, not to scare you, but I have a few, a few PowerPoint slides that I can walk you through to help you understand um, the expanded grading options for this current semester. So as Mr. Dixon said, um, if you're struggling right now, you can work with your college professor and you can ask for an incomplete, in which case you would have up to a year to finish the course. Um, you can also select a pass or fail grade. And so rather than going into all those details, I think we'll just save that for the end. And if there are some students on the call uh, or on Zoom right now that are interested in that discussion, then we'll just invite you to, to hang on and, and join us for that discussion after the registration discussion. So for most of you, my understanding is that you joined because you're interested in signing up for your very first college class, either this summer or this fall. And so we'll focus there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is share my screen with you. So what, what you should be seeing in just a moment is um, a picture that says registering for college classes. And Mr. Dixon, can you give me a thumbs up if that's what you see? That is what I see. Okay, yep. sounds great. Okay, so for those of you who are interested in taking your very first dual credit class or continuing with um, a second or third dual credit class, the most important uh, thing for you to know is that our registration for summer and fall classes opens up on Monday, April 20th, which is next week. And that is for continuing dual credit students. So that would be if you've already taken a class with us last year, or if you're currently taking a class with us. If you will be taking your very first dual credit class, then you are able to register starting on Monday, April 27th. And we don't really have a deadline for um, registering for our classes. We will accept registration throughout the summer and even into August. We usually do try to cut off registration 
for high school students a couple of days before our classes start in August. And that's just because we want to make sure that you're starting off on the right foot, um, that you have your book for your class, and that you're ready to go. Um, so just know that if you're not quite ready to choose your college class in the next couple of weeks, you really would have all summer to think about it. And uh, even into August, you can, you can even wait until hopefully you're back on your high school campus in August and you could even um, register at that point. The advantage of thinking about it now though is that we do have a limited number of classes. And um, as you might know, we have about 7,000 students at San Juan College. Many of them are degree-seeking students, which means that they've already graduated high school and they are moving along toward receiving their degree. And so to give you the same opportunity to um, get those open spots in the classes, we do encourage you to register early if you're able to. Um, if, if you aren't able to select your classes until August, just know that San Juan College um, and your high school work very closely together. In fact, uh, I have meetings with high school principals as well as with your high school counselors. And so if there's a class that fills up in April or May um, and you didn't get a spot in that class, you can still let us know that you're interested in that class and we can always build another section of that class. So if we know, for example, that there are 10 Bloomfield High School students that would like to take um, an introduction to, um, let's say, a, a small group communication class or an interpersonal communication class, we can potentially build a class section just for your high school. So Mr. Dixon had mentioned that one thing for you to think about is whether you want to take a class at San Juan College or whether you want to take a class um, online. Another option that has not been mentioned yet is that you could take a class at Bloomfield High School. So your principal and your guidance counselors work together with San Juan College to arrange for some dual credit classes to take place at your high school. So we have had a math class at your high school. We have had a chemistry class with Mr. Starr that was a dual credit class. And we're able to create more classes for your students. So if you're interested um, in having a class at your high school, I would just encourage you to talk with your guidance counselors about that. And if there's a qualified teacher at Bloomfield High School, then we might be able to create a class just for you that would take place at your high school. And we do see students sometimes be more successful at their high school because it's a face-to-face -face class with a high school teacher that they're familiar with. Um, the advantage though of taking a class at San Juan College is that you then get the college experience and you have the opportunity to interact with other college students. One more option that we haven't mentioned is that we do have San Juan College East Campus, which is located in Aztec. And at that campus, we also offer um, a number of college classes, if, if that's a possibility for you to have transportation to Aztec. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And I'll show you in a little while, I'll show you how to find where the classes are and the locations of our classes. So um, if, as Mr. Dixon said, if you have not applied to San Juan College yet, that would be the first step. So on this PowerPoint slide, you can see um, that we have a website here, sanjuancollege.edu slash apply. And it's an online application that you fill out. It doesn't take long. Um, but that is how you actually enroll at San Juan College as a dual credit student. And after you do that, within a couple of business days, you receive a welcome letter from San Juan College, and you'll get that welcome letter at the email address that you gave us in the application. And that's a really important letter because it gives you your student ID number, as well as how to log in to Canvas, which is our learning platform for our classes and it also gives you information about your San Juan College email address. So 
if this will be your first college class, step one is that you'll go to that website and before you apply online to San Juan College, we just wanted to let you know that you will need to know your social security number. So you might need to ask your parents for that um, before you start filling out the application. You will also need to use maybe your Bloomfield High School email address or a personal email address that you know the password to <laughs> so that you can log in to that email address um, and get a confirmation code in order to finish the online application. So how it works is that you start the online application and then um, you enter your email address and you receive a confirmation code that you then use to kind of log back on to our application and complete the application. So you'll also need to know your mailing address and when you enter your phone number, I would encourage you to use a phone number um, where we can reach you as the student. And the reason for that is right now in, in our COVID-19 situation, um, our instructors and some of our achievement coaches are calling students. And sometimes um, that phone number might be a parent's phone number, uh, which is okay in some situations, but you might prefer to give us the phone number where we can reach you directly. You'll also need to know your anticipated graduation year, that, that's your high school graduation, and then um, whatever academic term that you'll be starting at San Juan College, whether it be the summer or the fall. So just some advice that we like to give to high school students is that if this is your very first time taking a college class, we would recommend that you consider only taking one college class. And the reason for that is everything that um, you accomplish in your college class does get reported on your permanent college transcript. And so it's very important that you take this opportunity seriously and do your best. If you're not sure if you're ready for the rigor of a college level class, you might consider taking our first year experience class. And the course number is shown here. It's, F, it's called FYEX 1110. And that is a great class because it's actually required for pretty much all of our academic degrees at San Juan College. So since it's a required class, it, it gets you started on whatever degree um, you might be pursuing. And if you're thinking that you might transfer to a four-year university or college within the state of New Mexico, that class does transfer. So the credits that you earn in that class um, do transfer. And the content of that class is a lot about helping you just develop as a person. It helps you identify your goals and your career direction. It also um, just kind of gets you in the rhythm of a routine with a, a lot of assignments um, and a lot of feedback from instructors. So you do a lot of reflection in that class, a lot of writing, and um, it's just a class that has really great instructors who are very invested in your personal development. Um, I've taught the class and it, I, I believe it's a great class. So uh, we recommend that class. Um, the next bullet point here is just saying that the New Mexico Public Education Department which is sort of like the umbrella to all the high schools in the state of New Mexico, they have recommended that students not take more than two dual credit classes each semester until you've met your high school requirements. But I think that's a little misleading because like Mr. Dixon started out saying, you could take an English or a math or even a science class that would actually accomplish both. It would accomplish um, receiving credits for high school graduation, and it would also um, benefit you by, by earning college credits. So that's where you might need to just work with your high school guidance counselor to say, hey, would it be more beneficial for me to take this high school English class, or would it be more beneficial for me to take this college English class, and would this college English class work for my high school requirements? And so that's a conversation to just double check with your high school guidance counselor. Before we um, show you a couple of our web pages that helps you learn um, kind of how to pick out your classes, I just wanted to mention that San Juan College has a credit hour policy. And this is consistent with other colleges and universities across the US. 
And basically what this PowerPoint slide is trying to tell you is that if most of our classes are three credit hours, um, and for each hour that you spend in class, whether it's a face-to-face -face class or whether you're learning through an online class, you would be expected to complete two hours of homework um, for every hour that you spend in class. And so what that looks like is if you're taking one college class, which is worth three credits, you can expect to spend three hours in class or online learning the content and then double that amount of time doing your homework or studying for the class for a total of nine hours per week. And so I think this is important to point out because it is different than high school classes. In high school, you might be able to get all of the work done in the, in the class, like in the class period that you have allotted for that class. But a college class is different because the rigor of the class um, can be a little bit more difficult than high school. It kind of depends on what the class is. I've heard some high school students say that their advanced placement class is actually harder than, <clears throat> harder than the dual credit class. And so it kind of depends on the class, but we did just want to give you this guideline that um, it may not be exactly accurate, but if you are planning to take one college class, um, it would be good to budget your time and expectation that you might need to spend up to nine hours a week on that college class. Another recommendation we wanted to share with you today is that when you start looking for classes, you'll notice that they have a start date and an end date. And paying attention to the start date of the class and the end date of the class is really important because at San Juan College, in pa the past couple of years, we've actually started having um, eight week classes. And these classes are more for degree seeking college students because um, some degree seeking college students who have already graduated high school, they may not want to take four classes at once. They may just want to take two eight week classes the first half of the semester and then two eight week classes the last half of the semester. And so these eight week classes are actually pretty tough because they contain 16 weeks of material with half the time to get all of it done. And so if you look, if you consider that credit hour policy that we just talked about, that could mean maybe 18 hours a week that you would have to spend on an eight week class. So in general, we don't really recommend those classes for high school students unless you know that you're um, very ready to engage in that, in that fast paced type of work. I wanted to also just give you a little bit of advice about online classes. If you don't have um, access to a computer or internet at home, it may not be the best choice for you to take an online class. And that's just because if you only have access um, at your high school to work on your online class and you don't have access outside of your high school, you may not have enough time to complete all of the work. But again, it depends on the class and we don't wanna discourage you. So if you are pretty confident that um, you would be successful in an online class, even though you don't have access to a computer or internet at home, um, you're welcome to still register for that class. We just wanna let you know that it's a consideration. So how academic advising works for you as a high school student who's interested in taking a college class is that San Juan College actually relies on your high school guidance counselor to do a lot of the advising with you to help you identify a class that's going to work for you. And the reason for that is because if you do have transportation or the ability to, let's say, take a class at San Juan College East in Aztec, maybe you're available for that class after two o'clock or after three o'clock, maybe you're available to take an evening class. We would just want to make sure that whatever college class you sign up for, that it works with your high school schedule. And so we ask your high school guidance counselor to approve the classes that you choose at San Juan College. Now, some of you might be really ambitious and you might want to just get as many college credits as possible while you're in high school. And some of you 
might even want to try to complete an associate degree, which is a two-year college degree, while you're still in high school. And that is possible, and we do see students that, that get that far while they're in high school. So if that's you, if you're really ambitious and you're wanting to map out your whole college um, degree, then you're very welcome to work with one of our college academic advisors. And here's the phone number that you can call to set up an appointment with one of our academic advisors. And this is actually a flyer that also has the same phone number. I wanted to let you know that Recently, San Juan College has decided to assign every dual credit student an academic advisor at San Juan College. So even though your high school guidance counselor is your main point of contact when it comes to picking out your college class, you do also have a college academic advisor that has been assigned to you. And if you're not enrolled with us yet, or you haven't become a dual credit student officially yet, then you don't have an advisor, but once you do become a dual credit student, we will have um, an academic advisor from San Juan College that is assigned to you. And the purpose of that is it helps us um, send out emails to you. And it's important to note that all of our emails do go to your San Juan College email address. So if you're used to checking your Bloomfield High School email address, that's great. Um, but any communication about your college class, it will come to your San Juan College email. So that's an important um, thing to keep in mind. So now what I'm going to show you on our website is um, a few different things. I'll kind of show you the outline here and then I'll go ahead and show you on the web. But I'm about to walk you through our online academic catalog. and. On our online academic catalog, you'll be able to look at our course degree plans. And within those course degree plans, we have what's called a course sequence. And that shows you the order um, of classes that you should take if you're pursuing a certain degree. So let's say that you want to receive a degree in business. Um, it'll show you like what classes to take in what order. And then, also on the website, I'll show you how to understand the description of a class and whether or not the class has prerequisites, which I'll explain what that means. But basically, a prerequisite means that you might need a certain GPA um, before you can take the class, or you might have to take an introductory class before you can take a more advanced class. And then I'll also talk about the course fees that are involved and I'll show you how to search for classes. So I just included this PowerPoint slide so that you can see that this is the website that I'm going to. So now I'm going to minimize my PowerPoint screen and um, oh, oh, there you are, Annie. Sorry about that. I'm not sure um, why my internet just went out, but I am back. So I apologize for that. It does look like Zoom just automatically kicked me out and brought me back in. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I was, right when I was, ready right to look when I was about to show you the good stuff. I was getting ready to look for your cell phone number because I didn't know if you, had, if you knew that you were disconnected and were just still talking. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I, again, apologize. I don't know. Sometimes strange things happen with the internet. So, um, I'm going to share my screen again. And Brandon, are you seeing my website here? I am. Okay, sounds great. All right, so we'll resume where we left off. Um, as you can see, and I can send you all of these websites, but right here we are on the San Juan College academic calendar. And this is just important because it shows you the dates of when our classes begin. So I'll go ahead and click on our summer 2020 academic calendar. And this may be a little bit hard to see because it's small print, but I wanted to just show you where to find it because it shows you again uh, when our classes start, 
and uh, how long our classes are. And so it would be really important as a college student, even though you're still in high school, um, to even consider printing out this academic calendar and posting it on a bulletin board or maybe putting it in a folder or binder because this tells you things like when final exams are, when Thanksgiving break is, um, and please note that this college calendar may or may not align with your Bloomfield High School calendar. So it's really important to understand that your college class will follow the college academic calendar. Okay, so now I want to show you the San Juan College Academic Catalog and the website we can give you through the PowerPoint slides, but it's catalog.sanjuancollege.edu. And when you get to this web page, um, what I wanted to show you is our degrees and certificates first. So we have over a hundred degrees. Um, uh, most of our associate degrees, they would be two-year programs. Um, a certificate program might be shorter, like a one-year program, but you can see a listing here of our degrees. So let's say that you're interested in dental hygiene. You could click on this. Um, and this would show you the course sequence. So you can see that our first year seminar, first year experience class is a requirement to receive that degree. And then it shows you the classes um, that you need for that degree. So this is really helpful to understand what classes would make sense for you um, to take while you're still in high school. And so here it's showing you even the order of classes. So in the if this would be if you were starting the degree after high school, it's showing you in the fall semester what classes you would take in the spring, in the summer. So as I'm looking at this, I didn't necessarily choose an easy degree. I just kind of off the top of my head chose dental hygiene. But I'm noticing that interpersonal communication is, is a requirement, or you could take public speaking. Those are good classes for a high school student to take. Um, I would definitely not encourage you to take anatomy and physiology <laughs> while you're still in high school. Um, but this just kind of gives you an idea of what the required classes are. Another way that you can look at our degree is to just go to our homepage, which is sanjuancollege.edu. And um, another way that you can kind of think about what classes you might want to take, I wanted to point out that we have, um, sorry, I'm looking for our career coach. I wonder if it's been moved. Here it is. Um, you see this icon right here called Career Coach. This is a free online assessment that you can take. So if you're not sure what you'd like to do after high school, you can take um, our career assessment. And this will give you a good amount of feedback about um, what possibilities would work for you based on your interests. So you can see there's a six question, just answer six questions about yourself. Or if you want to invest the time, you can answer 60 questions about yourself. And this will give you some great knowledge about what degree programs um, might work well for you, including what jobs and career opportunities would exist for you. So I wanted to just point out that our career coach um, might be really helpful for you. And then um, on our homepage here, you can click on academics. And we've actually, organized all of our degree programs according to seven different pathways. So you might not know exactly what college degree you want to pursue, but you might have a general um, idea. So for example, here you can see our seven pathways, um, arts, communication, and humanities, business and entrepreneurship, computer science, information technology, and cybersecurity, and you can see the rest here. So say that you're, um, you can see energy, health sciences, and then science, math, and engineering. So if you think that you want to do something in the health sciences field, for example, this is also um, kind of where you can find 
what courses you would take in what order. So looking at these, um, I guess let's just use the same example of dental hygiene. This will show you um, a lot of similar information about how much money you can make and specific information about this program. Um, what I think is helpful about going from our home page and then clicking on academics and looking at our career pathways is that this is another format that shows the course plan. So for dental hygiene, if you notice right here, it says course plan. I'm going to click on it. And this shows you um, kind of the same information, um, but maybe you like the format or the organization of this a little bit better. So this again shows you what classes in college you would have to take to get this degree. So this would be probably the best choice for a high school student would be to take the first year seminar class. And then this is showing you other general education requirements. So again, as a high school student, it would make very good sense for you to take maybe interpersonal communication shown here or English 1110, which is our composition class. Um, that is a college writing class, but it would probably achieve your high school English requirement as well as earn you college credits. And then you can see math, the math requirement. Another good class that we see a lot of high school students be very successful in is our introduction to psychology class, which you can see is a requirement for the dental hygiene program here. And then these are your more specific classes that you would take um, after high school. And if you keep scrolling down, this again shows you the same information that the academic catalog showed us, which is kind of the order of classes that you would take. So it shows you sort of what to expect in terms of the next couple of years. Um, I'm going to close that one out and go back to our academic catalog. So once you've identified um, either a career pathway or an academic degree that you might be interested in, then you're ready to look up the classes. So let's say that you want to take the interpersonal communication class in high school that you noticed on the dental hygiene website. <laughs> What you can do is, um, and what we just did, if you just missed it, is we clicked on course descriptions. So we're in the academic catalog, we're clicking on course descriptions, and if we don't really remember um, what the course number was, you can actually search for, you can search for it here under the general category, um, or you can, if you do remember the course number, you can actually type it in here. And at that point, you might need to scroll down. But here's the interpersonal communication class. And it kind of explains a course description, which is, you know, what does this, what is this class about? So here's the course description. And it lists a prerequisite here, which says English 050. I think this is a little hard to understand um, if you're a high school student, because what is what is this English 050 class? Um, what this actually is, is a developmental remedial class that um, is not available to high school students because um, through the New Mexico dual credit program, none of our developmental classes work for dual credit students. But how you would bypass this class is through your high school GPA. So if you have a 2.6 high school GPA or higher, you would actually surpass this developmental class and you would be able to register for the interpersonal communication class. So that's what the prerequisite means. And um, your high school guidance counselor and I can kind of coach you through and answer your questions about that. Um, maybe another class that I could show you to illustrate what a course fee is, is business. And I'm actually going to see. Hi. 
so I scroll down and I look at this introduction to business class. This is another class that we see high school students take. Um, it's worth three credits. Here's the course description. What I wanted to point out in this example is that some of our classes have a course or program fee. And that's important to note because as a New Mexico dual credit student, um, the tuition is waived for your college class and your books and course materials are covered um, for your first class at Bloomfield High School. Um, but after you take your first dual credit class, I believe the Bloomfield School District does have you pay for your books um, for any other classes after you've taken your first class. That's and correct. That, okay, and that might involve a course or program fee. Um, what the course fee is, a lot of times it, it covers um, online content. So a lot of times college instructors will try to lower the cost of the textbook by including an ebook or more online resources that they offer through Canvas. And so that sometimes adds on a course fee. So I just show you this example because I know the introduction to business class uh, used to have a course fee of only $13. And now the course fee is, is pretty hefty, it's $90. So this would just be something to note um, before you register for classes is whether or not it has a course fee. And just asking your guidance counselor, you know, is that a course fee that I would be responsible for? or is the Bloomfield School District uh, gonna, gonna cover that for me? So that's just something to be aware of. It, it really doesn't affect too many high school students um, because most, most of you are only taking one class and the books and everything will be completely at no cost to you because your school district is paying for it. Mr. Dixon, um, is there anything that you can remember from the meeting I had with high school counselors that I have not shown yet as it relates to the catalog? Um, I'm, I'm gonna show you next how to find classes on WebAdvisor. But I think I I've covered think everything. Anything. I, was, I was just gonna say WebAdvisor and then you said it. That's the only thing okay. I can think of. That <laughs> okay, sounds good. So now I'm going to show you how to actually find the days and times that our classes are available. So I've just um, returned here to the San Juan College homepage, which is sanjuancollege.edu, and I'm scrolling down to the very bottom, and here you can see what's called Web Advisor. And this is sort of like your advisor that is going to show you uh, how to find, how to search for classes that are available. So we click on that, and you could either click on students or prospective students. Um, the way I usually do it is click on prospective students and search for sections here. And if you know that you are wanting to take a class, let's say in the fall, you would click on fall 2020. And let's say that we were interested in looking at that introduction to business class. Um, so this is where you might need to have written down the course number from the academic catalog. So I happen to know that um, the business class was under BUSA 100. And if I'm open to different locations, I can just click submit if I just want to see all of the different introduction to business classes. Then what this shows me is a list of all the intro to business classes. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this shows you the location. So we have a couple classes that are on our main campus and then a few that are online. And it's very important to look here at the meeting information because it tells you again the start and the end date of the class. Um, this is a class right here that I would not necessarily recommend to you because it's August 24th through October 18th, which means it's just an eight week class, uh, one of the short classes. So that one I wouldn't recommend. Let's say that we want to look for a first year experience class in the fall. And we know that we want to take it um, on the East Campus. And I'm not as familiar with this as our academic advisor that was showing the high school counselors. So I'm kind of working, working through this with you. 
but let's say you're interested to know, is there a first year experience class that I could take at the San Juan College East class, uh, East campus? You can click that and you can see that there is a first year experience class um, at our East campus located in Aztec. And um, it's taught by Miss Jean. She's a high school guidance counselor from Vista Nueva High School. And it's available Monday, Wednesday, 4.30 to 6 o'clock, which would be after school. Um, and it, it is a late start class, but this looks like because it starts September um, through December, that might be an eight week class or it might be a 12 week class. Um, but either way, it does show you that we do have that option. It also tells you know, over on the far right, um, it also tells you how many people are signed up for that course. So you can, you can see how full the course is getting. And, you know, if, you, if you're in a situation where you have to make a quick decision, um, I, had a, I need to get into that class because there's 23 and there's only 24 seats and 23 seats are full, then you might want to jump on that section and, and get in there. Yeah, that's a really good point. So to illustrate that a little bit further, now I've just looked, I'm just looking up all of our first year experience classes for the fall. And um, I thought this might be helpful to see. What Mr. Dixon was just saying is that this column here shows you how many seats are available, what the capacity is of that class, and how many people are on the wait list. So in this example here, the first class, there are 24 seats available. Or yeah, so no one has registered yet. So there's 24 seats available. Um, the capacity is a total of 24 students that can be in that section and then zero people are on the wait list. So this shows you kind of a diverse offering. It, it shows you that we do have our first year experience class online. We also have established it at some of our high schools like Kirtland High School, Newcomb High School, Rosinante, Vista Nueva, Aztec. Um, I don't believe we have one at Bloomfield High School currently, but if there is a Bloomfield High School teacher that that steps up and is interested in teaching the class at your high school, um, that's part of my role at the college is setting up those classes to take place at the high school. So we could certainly pursue that if that's an option. Um, we also have had some classes, for example, in our School of Energy, where one of our college instructors actually goes out to Aztec and teaches um, the electric electricity class for the Aztec high school students. And that was something that the principal um, set up with us. So they said, hey, we have a group of 10 students, 10 high school students in Aztec that want to take a school of energy class, but it would have to be offered at our high school. What can you do for us? And we were able to identify um, a San Juan College faculty member rather than a high school teacher who was very happy to come out to Aztec. So those are options that we can pursue with your high school administration um, if there's interest. So be sure to let your high school guidance counselor know if what we have available here through our classes is going to work for you. And if um, you're not seeing an option or a location or a time that works with your schedule, um, there's certainly an opportunity for us to build that class for you. So now I'm going to just go back um, to my PowerPoint slides. I, and And just say a few more things about um, placement. So many of our college classes do require a certain GPA in order to bypass those developmental classes. Um, and in general, many of our classes do require a 2.6 high school GPA. And how we determine whether or not you can place into those classes is that your high school guidance counselor will send San Juan College a copy of your transcript, your high school transcript. So right now in April, we know that your spring 2020 transcript available is not, a, is not ready yet. So we would just go off of your fall 2019 high school transcript. Um, but say that you want to take an introduction to psychology class, which requires a 2.6 or higher GPA. And right now, well, 
I know with the COVID-19 situation, maybe your GPA is frozen, um, but as you continue through high school, if your GPA gets higher and that qualifies you for more college classes, then that's great, and your high school guidance counselor will just send us the most updated transcript. We do have many classes that do not require a 2.6 GPA, and here are just a few examples. Um, the first year experience class is available to all students. Um, our introduction to business class does not have a GPA or prerequisite uh, or developmental class that needs to be taken. Um, drawing and painting are some classes that we do have available at some of our high schools. Um, and then you can see even our some of our language classes, um, especially if you have that background of knowing that language, um, that might be a really good choice for you to receive college credit. Astronomy is another popular class for high school students that might fulfill your high school science requirement, um, and it doesn't require a GPA. It's it's a fun class, I've heard. Annie, so, did you, Annie, did you think your PowerPoint was on here? Oh, are you not? Yes, I'm, are you not? Yeah, it, I, I'm still seeing the web advisor. I just wanted to let. I didn't know if we were supposed oh. to be seeing something as you're talking because I'm still okay. seeing the web advisor. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I thought that I did share um my powerpoint so now i'm going to share it and let me know in just a moment okay can you see the powerpoint I, I now yes, okay yeah. sorry you, about sorry that <laughs> no that's great i'm so glad that you did because um this is what i was just talking through so we do have some powerpoint slides that um that do talk about placement and here's a list of the classes that do not require a 2.6 gpa there's actually a lot more classes that don't require a 2.6 GPA and um, we can walk you through our academic catalog again later to show you like when you click on the course description it will tell you whether or not it has a prerequisite if no prerequisite is listed then it does not require um, any kind of GPA and you can enroll in that class um, many students have questions about math classes and in general it, it might be better if you take your high school math classes before you take our college classes, and that's just a recommendation, but we've seen some um, high school students struggle with some of our math classes. So um, our, our academic dean for math has actually put together these bullet points that I'm showing you here that would kind of provide some guidance as to which math classes would help you depending on your academic and career path. So if you're planning, for example, to go into nursing, the college math class that would benefit you most would be Math 1220. Um, that does have a prerequisite, so you might have to take a high school math class before you're ready for that class, but at least um, it provides some guidance as to which math class would help you. And then this next PowerPoint slide um, provides a little bit further guidance for other career paths. So if, for example, you knew that you were going into a trade, such as welding, um, we have a great technical math class that you could take. Um, this PowerPoint slide is just saying that these math classes might have prerequisites, which the guidance counselor can um, make sure that you meet before you would register for our classes. And I think we've already talked about the course fees, so I'll skip over this PowerPoint slide. I just have a couple more slides left um, and then we can open up, open it up for questions. But this PowerPoint slide is just letting you know that um, when you do start your class, whether it be this summer or whether it be this fall, it's really important that you read course guide. Um, your parents might, might know that it, it, maybe in their college experience, it was called a syllabus. And I'm not sure if you have a syllabus for your high school classes, but the course guide is really important to read um, very carefully because in addition to your textbook, there might be other resources that you need to be able to access for your classes, such as an access code to some online content or um, access to a math lab, required software for a computer science class, or you might need to be able to watch videos 
but if you're planning to do a lot of your homework at high school, sometimes your high school computer doesn't allow you to access YouTube, but your college instructor does expect you to be able to access YouTube, so you might need to watch, uh, watch it at home. So these are just things to be aware of um, that I, I thought I would let you know now. Um, later on in August, when you're back at high school, we will have you sign a dual credit agreement form. This is just a very brief um, form that you fill out together with your parents and with your high school guidance counselor. And this is what it looks like here. It's just a double-sided form um, where you just understand that you're taking a college class. And then you also have the opportunity as a high school student to let us know if we can share information about your college class and about your grades to your parents or not. So that's called the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And um, again, this form will be available to you when you get back into high school this fall. And we will require that you sign this form before your college class begins. Um, if you are taking a summer class with us, um, you may not be able to fill out this form before that, and that's okay. We'll just make sure that we get it on file as soon as possible. So how you actually register for your classes, if you feel confident with um, the classes that you've looked up on our academic catalog, then you would just email those classes to your high school guidance counselor and make sure that they approve. And if you need more help figuring out what college class might work for you, um, I might recommend that you go ahead and schedule an appointment with Mr. Dixon or Ms. Ms. Fowler to talk more about what classes um, would make sense for you. And then your high school guidance counselor will email your registration request to the San Juan College Records and Registration Department. So, uh, rather than have you email San Juan College with what class you want to take, we'll just have that go through your high school counselor so that they can make sure that it that it works for your high school schedule. Um, this is just a handout that I would be happy to email you. Um, it just kind of summarizes that the very first step in becoming a dual credit student is to apply. So that would be something that you could do this week is make sure you get enrolled at San Juan College. And then your high school guidance counselor can send us your high school transcript. And you can talk with your high school guidance counselor um, in whatever way they prefer, whether it be over the phone or through email, or maybe even um, a virtual meeting like this. And they will approve the college that you've chosen. Um, since we're running out of time, I will save the rest of the, there's just a few more slides, but I'll save these for the high school guidance counselors because they can provide guidance for you about how to get your books. Um, this is just saying though that uh, if our college campus is not able to open to visitors, we will most likely um, have you, you or your guidance counselor will contact our bookstore and we will mail you your books for the summer or even for the fall, but hopefully for the fall we will, we will be open and you'll be able to pick up your books from the bookstore. Um, I just have this last picture here to show you that once your high school is back in session, our academic catalog will actually be printed for you. And so if it's um, challenging for you to look online and try to navigate all the websites that I just showed you, we will have a printed dual credit academic catalog that will be available in your guidance counselor office. And you can flip through this academic catalog and see the same information that I just showed you on the web pages. So you'll be able to look up our course plan and course description and prerequisites and things like that. And then um, finally, this is just showing you some resources that we have. We have achievement coaches that help high school students. We have a tutoring center, online tutoring, and we even have um, resources that help you just get through. So if you need food or um, other social needs that you might have, we have resources available to you as a high school student. So this is just our last couple of slides letting you know that San Juan College is open right now and all of our staff are working here at home. So this is just our main phone number if you need anything. It's also available here in Spanish and in, um, and in Navajo.
So if that's helpful to you, we will include that in the PowerPoint slides that we send to you. This is my contact information here, my personal cell phone number and my email address. So if there's any specific questions that you have that your guidance counselor um, doesn't know the answer to, I would be happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one, um, virtually or just talk with you or answer your email. So with that, um, I think we are close to out of time. I will ask Mr. Dixon if you'd like us to continue or what you think we should do next. Manny? Yes. Um, it's Mrs. Fowler. I, I am on this um, this um, Zoom meeting, so I just apologize. Um, I just wanted to just say um, if anybody needs to contact me, you can contact me by email through the school email just dflower at bsin.k12.nm.us and my personal cell phone number, all, that's all I can use right now, is 505-402-3998. But if you email me and leave me your phone number, I can contact you that way too if you have any questions on the registration part, okay? And I'll give you my contact information as well. Mine is going to be B and then Dixon, D-I-C-K-S-O-N, at B-S-I-N dot um, K-1-2 dot N-M dot U-S. And my personal cell phone number is 505-947-6946. So if you need to contact us on those, uh, you know, take advantage of the email and the phone numbers. And, and again, try to put what we showed you guys to use on that. And uh, the plan also, just to let you know, is that the uh, video, this was supposed to be recorded, so eventually we're gonna get this video, and I'm hoping to get it put on the Bloomfield High School website. So if you need to review this information again, you didn't take good enough notes, and you'd like to review the information again, uh, it should be up. And tomorrow we're doing the exact same thing for the 10th graders. So if you know of any other juniors that didn't get this message because of the email situation, it didn't go out by email, let them know that they can log on at two o'clock tomorrow. They're going to get identical to what you guys just got today. So um, thank, thank you guys for logging in. Are there any questions that we can answer for those of you guys that are still logged in and we can try to answer those and then we can uh, go ahead and uh, get out of this after we've answered any questions. And we'll wait because you might need to unmute yourself before you, before we can hear you, so. Annie, I have a question. Yes. So you mentioned at the very beginning of the video something about current dual credit students that are in classes right now. Yes. Uh, special grading that was going to be offered to them. Yes. Um, maybe would it be if it would be helpful for you? Um, let's see if there are any other questions, and then if not. Um, those who are not interested in the current semester grading might wish to log off and then um, I can continue on with showing you a few PowerPoint slides if that would be helpful in explaining the grading options to you I'd be happy to do that okay and then I had one other question as well and my question is um, I have a student who is pursuing a career but needs to get prerequisite classes taken care of. And so would Ms. Fowler and Mr. Dixon be someone that I contact and talk to, or would it be you to try to figure out the classes that San Juan College offers would be transferable for the degree program to the college that she's going to be going to? Yeah, that is a great question. So San Juan College does have uh, some articulation agreements between our degree programs and other universities. Um, you, you could feel free to send me an email and let me know specifically what university and what degree program um, your student is interested in. And then if we do have an articulation agreement where our credits transfer to that university's program, um, that would be helpful information for you to know. 
But sometimes in those situations, you might need to contact the academic advising or even the department of the university that your student will be transferring to. And you might even need to consult with them to ask them, you know, would San Juan College's biology class transfer to you? And the answer that you might receive from the other university might be that our class will transfer as an elective credit, but not necessarily as um, credits that count toward that specific science degree, for example. So that sometimes those questions are best answered by the university or college that your student will be transferring to. Um, and the reason for that I can give an example of University of New Mexico. Um, I was at a statewide dual credit meeting with many colleges and universities from the state of New Mexico. And the academic advisor at, at University of New Mexico had said kind of the same example that I just shared, which is that some universities are going to require that their core classes are taught by them. So for example, if your student is taking, um, is pursuing an engineering degree, they might want their faculty to teach your student their engineering class. So if your student took a prerequisite class, it might transfer and count toward their engineering degree, um, but it might not count toward um, the core degree requirement, like it might count toward a prerequisite or a, a general education requirement. So sometimes, just to summarize, it, it does depend on the university and the degree program. But I'd be a first point of contact at San Juan College for you um, to kind of help you start start that process. So you're welcome to email me. Are there any other questions while everyone is still on the call related to registration? Okay, so Mr. Dixon, if it's okay with you, um, we'll, we'll just wrap up by thanking all of you for joining us. And if you do want to stay on the Zoom session, we, we can talk about the current semester and the expanded grading options. But otherwise, if you're not interested in that, um, again, we thank you for joining us and hope you have a great day. Thanks, guys. We look forward to your emails and corresponding with you online. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like we have um, several people that are still here with us. Mr. Dixon, would you recommend that I just answer their questions or do you think um, maybe we should find out what their questions are again and then if it's worth uh, their time, I'd be happy to show them the PowerPoint slides. So. The person that had the question about the expanded grading options, um, could you share with us again what your question is and then I can either answer your question or I can show you some PowerPoint slides with a lot of details about your question. Yeah, I was just asking, you had mentioned that um, for the current students that are in dual credit classes that there might be um, some grading, some differences. So I have a student who, um, took the an online math class didn't do well for it and now took it out at the college to be under the professor there and then now has gone back online again for obvious reasons and so i was just curious if there was um you had just mentioned that there were uh different grading options or you know different things like that so if there is great if there's not that's fine too yeah so the best go ahead I was going to say, I think this is the, the same situation we were talking about yesterday about the kids that were in uh, Mr. Mendoza's math class that had trouble with that math class last time. I think this pertains to that. I just wanted to say that. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was thinking, too. So for that specific math class, I would recommend that the best thing for your student to do is to correspond directly with Mr. Mendoza about how he's planning to continue that class. Um, most of our San Juan College classes this current spring semester are continuing, as you mentioned, through an online format, um, but there are nuances. And for our high school-based classes, such as the math class that was taking, taking place at Bloomfield High School, 
um, the college is kind of yielding to the school district as to how that class should continue or not. Um, and that's because we don't, you know, really have like jurisdiction over what the high schools do. And so um, I'm not sure what Mr. Mendoza has decided if he's going to continue um, delivering the course content for that class or or how he's doing that. So I think the best thing is just for your your student to reach out to Mr. Mendoza and find out um, how he's handling that class. Can I just, can I interrupt here a minute, please? Yep. Um, this is Mrs. Fowler. Um, I know the student she's referring to is not taking Mr. Mendoza, but is taking one um, at the college, was at oh. the college. So gotcha. the instructor there would probably need to communicate with her about how to handle that. Right. That's the main thing, um, the main answer to the question, any question about the current semester is that we really recommend that the students communicate with their college instructor about the plan for their specific class. Um, San Juan College faculty have many Zoom sessions throughout the week, some of which I've, I've gotten to be a part of, and they are constantly sharing strategies of how they're delivering their content. Many of them are um, changing the plan, like maybe they're changing the assignments or uh, extending the due dates. Um, we're still following our academic calendar and things will still wrap up at the same time. And at that point, at the end of the semester is when students can decide, do I want to take an incomplete in this class because I still have work to do, or do I want to um, take a pass fail grade? So I can actually show you a f but does that answer your question? So the main thing is to talk to their college instructor because each class is um, being handled a, a little bit differently. Yes, that helps. Okay. I'll just show you, um, some of our, okay, so all of our San Juan College students, including your high school student, um, would have received an email on March 31st, uh, but that email would have gone to their San Juan College email address. But I do have PowerPoint slides that you can access after our time together today that do contain the, the bullet points that were in that email. And just to show you right now, are you seeing my PowerPoint slides, Brandon? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So um, at the end of this semester, the student um, will receive the letter grade that they earned in the class, but then they will have the option of choosing an S grade if they earned an A, B, or C, or a U grade if they earned a D or an F. And um, here are some examples. So if someone is normally an A student, but they earn a C in the class, um, a C is still a passing grade. So they could opt to receive an S in the class. Um, I have to actually minimize myself. Okay, in that, in that case, the student would still receive college credit for the class, but their S grade does not affect their college GPA. So that would be, um, the purpose of taking an S in the class as opposed to a C. If a student receives a D or an F in a class, both of those are failing grades, they could instead um, ask the records department to change that to a U, which stands for unsatisfactory, and they don't pass the class in that case. They would still have to retake the class but the benefit of a U instead of a D or an F is that it doesn't impact their college GPA. Um, another option would be, as I had mentioned, if they don't have the resources, like the access to technology to complete their class right now, or if circumstances are just so tough um, because of many different things that could be happening right now in their lives, um, a really good option instead of withdrawing from the class is to ask the instructor, could I, uh, could I receive an incomplete in the class? And um, we are hoping that our college campus will be able to open this summer. Students would be welcome to come to our class, uh, come to our campus to complete their class, or they could um, wait until the fall, but they would actually have up to a year to complete the work for that class. And, 
the parameters for completing the class would just be up to the college instructor. So um, the advantage of taking an incomplete is that the student wouldn't have to re-register for the class and um, it wouldn't impact their, you know, their GPA or their college completion rate. So there's more slides that I could share with you, um, but that's kind of some good general information to start with. Does that help? That is very helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, but yeah, we have more PowerPoint slides here that give high school guidance counselors um, guidance as to whether or not it would make sense for a student to withdraw from their college class. And so uh, I believe these PowerPoint slides you know, could be shared with you as a parent or even with your, with your high school student. So we can make these available. The important thing though to note is that this week is the last week to withdraw from a full-term college class. So if any students do um, think that it's the best for them to withdraw from their class, they would just need to request that by this Friday. And the way to do that is, is usually best through the high school counselor. And then the high school guidance counselor emails us and lets us know that the student wants to withdraw. Okay, um, it looks like it's just the, the counselors and the parent that are still on the call. Is there anything else that you'd like us to address? No, thank you. You guys have a good day. Okay, thank you so much for staying on. We appreciate it. Thanks. Annie, do you, is there a thing on your end that tells how many people logged in? Mr. Burkholder asked me whenever this meeting got done, he wanted to know how many people actually logged in total, if, if there was a way to know I that. I saw 20. You saw 20? Okay. That's Great. what I, I yeah, that's what I wrote down too, is 20. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't, oops, I'm going to actually go ahead and stop the recording here.